Welcome to this soul lifting broadcast, which has been put together for your spiritual growth and to make greatness common right where you are. Be sure to make the best of this moment as God takes the lead in all that concerns you. Glory be to Jesus. So this series, which we talk, Mr. and Mrs. Better Half, this is season four that uh, shows that we've been on this maybe the last four years. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Better Half for this September, uh, we've we themed it Built to Last. Built to Last. One of the reasons why we dedicate a whole month to a teaching on marriage and relationships is that we have realized that divorce rate in our own climb here in Nigeria, I mean, this past few weeks, myself and my team, we've been doing a bit of study on marriage and divorce and, you know, all that. We checked the statistics. You know, we've said before, in the West, they said it's 50%. And uh, about three or four years ago, they said even the church went beyond the world. The divorce rate in the church in America, in North America, for instance, was much more than what you have among people who are not saved. It was, it was, very, it was a uh, you know, very heartbreaking statistic. The, 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 the trend is changing now with recent statistics. But I told my team during this past week, I said, look, all this is not an American thing. You know, I, I'm not, no longer interested. Let's talk about ourselves. And you know, some of us got into you know, checking because that's what we do. We, we try to research a bit. Um, we realized, for instance, there's a recent paper that, that said divorce is going up in northern Nigeria more than any other part of Nigeria. Divorce rate is going up. But generally speaking, divorce rate, we don't have the right statistics currently. The only thing that has been asserted is that it's going up in Nigeria. So I cannot say it's 50% like they could say in America, but it's going up. It's on the rise. And one particular paper put it in this mode that, you know what? Maybe we are where they were in the mid 70s and late 70s, where the feminist movement gained momentum. And women empowerment messages and all that uh, became more prominent. In fact, they started even pushing for maybe United Nations to create funds for women and children empowerment, you know, and all that. And they start to assert the right of women. And all that put together is what we generally call development. But development comes with its own baggage. Yeah. And part of the baggage we need to manage with development is that as we become more developed, the things that were taboos in our climb will start to become normal. And one of such may be divorce and separation. What should be the response of the church to that? Sound scriptural teaching. The Bible says a man of knowledge will increase strength. Sound scriptural teaching that will give us a balanced perspective to relationships and marriage. Life is all about perspective. That's what shapes my, my behavior and my action, my perspective. And how do I form a balanced perspective? I allow the light of God's word to shine upon my path. Is somebody still here this morning? Yeah, I allow the light of God's word to shine upon my path. That's how I create a balanced perspective. And if we don't want to miss our path in life, we must always check our perspective. We must always check our perspective. What's my view about this? A lot of the time, the, word, the prevailing worldview is always at variance with scriptures. And when you don't check yourself very well, you go with the crowd, and your, your, your prevailing mindset about a particular thing may be contrary to the scriptures. And because it's popular, you think it's okay. And it may not be okay. Because as believers, we believe in the word of God. We believe in the death and resurrection of Christ. And we believe in the principles of Christ, not just the person of Christ. When you accept Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, you receive the person of Christ. You then go a little further to buttress the person in whom you have believed by imbibing his principles. And there's a way you can work out your marriage in such a way that it will be apparent that you don't believe in the principles of Christ. So this season... Or this series has a lot for singles. It has a lot for couples. It has a lot for your colleagues at work. 
And that's why you should not keep them behind. Somebody here needs to maybe get a message and just drop it with your boss. You understand what I'm saying at the end of this service. Yeah. Uh, somebody needs to, you know, to invite somebody to church this series. And just help them with their, for the want of a better word, gutter mindset. <laughs> because some people talk about marriage and you open your mouth. Uh, is this what you believe? I say, yes, yes, yes. I remember, I remember a man was just saying that, look, what is it? What, how, how, what is the size of the brain of a woman? And then I'll be talking, a man will be talking, a woman will be talking. I mean, can you believe that? That if, if somebody actually said that, a human being said that. <laughs> and that is somebody's mentor. <laughs> Why did you see that in the Bible? And you know, some people will say the conviction you believe, you actually think that they're making sense. <laughs> Such people need to come to church this season and hear the word of God. Praise God. I said, praise God. Let me start out this morning with some things that I repeat in every Mr. and Ms. Better Half series, and then I will land on building a good foundation. That's where I'm starting from with this first message. Well, let me just, these three things that we always repeat, that we remind ourselves about, they are foundational beliefs for us as a church, as the Elevation Church on marriage. One, marriage is to be enjoyed and not to be endured. That's what we believe. And it's in the scriptures. Two are better than one. That's what the scripture says. Not bitter, but better. It didn't say two are bitter than one. It said two are better than one. So marriage is to be enjoyed and not to be endured. Many people are in marriages today and they're just enduring. And it's good to develop endurance and perseverance, but that's not supposed to be the permanent mode in marriage. Secondly, marriage was and is God's idea, not a man's idea. Marriage was and is still God's idea. And that has a lot of implication. It means that you cannot run your marriage with just your plain mind or with barbershop ideas or what else? Bear apologist or lunch break discussions. Yeah, you can't run a marriage with that. Genesis chapter 2 verse 18, the scripture says, And God said, Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Sorry, uh, it said, and God said, I, I was quoting a different, Genesis 1.26, that was what I just quoted. So Genesis 2.18, that's what I wanted to quote. The Bible says, and God said, it is not good that man should be alone. He said, I will make for him a helper that is suitable or comparable. The New King James says comparable. A helper that is comparable to him. This was God's statement, God's idea. Adam did not go to God and say, ah, God, didn't you say that I've been lonely? Do something about it. And God says, okay, let me go and pray about it. I'll come back to you. And then God went to pray. I, I wonder who he will, he will pray to anyway. But he went to pray and came back and said, I have a good idea. I have a good idea. Say, I will now put you to sleep. Yeah, don't worry. You will wake up back. But by the time you wake up, you see what you will see. It will be a cure for your loneliness problem. Was that what we read in the Bible? No. It was God's idea. Adam did not consult with God. God saw man and he said, I want this man to be fulfilled and blessed and all that. And it's not good. And when God says something is not good, it's not good. If a man says something is not good, he may not be saying the truth. But when God says something is not good, it's not good. It's not good that man should be alone. I will make for him. So marriage is God's idea. God created marriage to make man better. Every idea with which I would then run my marriage must come from the heart of God if it's going to work, if it's going to lead my marriage to the right place. If my marriage will not be like fish outside of water, it must be run, surrounded with the mind of God, with other ideas from the mind of God, with the word of God. I hope you understand what I'm saying. 
with scriptural principles if I will make the best out of it. Thirdly, our third foundational belief system is that marriage is really for holiness and not essentially for happiness. <laughs> That's the one that I know people struggle with a bit. Yeah, and I'm going to explain that. Marriage is really for holiness, not essentially for happiness. Ephesians chapter 5 will give us a better understanding of what I'm talking about. Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 25, 26, and 27. It says, husband, love, husbands, love your wife, just as Christ loved the church, and he gave himself for her, that he might sanctify. Somebody say sanctify. But I saw there's some words here in this verse of the scripture that are very important. That he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of the water by the word. Look at uh, the next verse. It says that he might present her to himself a glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. But that she should be holy. Somebody say holy. Oh, come and say it again with me. Say holy. holy. Yeah. Say that she should be holy and without blemish. What's God's mindset about marriage? Paul writing here, he described marriage as like the union between Christ and the church. Yeah. What's the end result of my union with Christ? Is holiness. So, marriage is for me to become better. In the process of becoming better, I may be sad, <laughs> and then I'll be happy, but it's a process. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Marriage does not have an automatic uh, uh, um, promise of happiness, but God wants to use it to make me better, to make me more presentable, to make me holy. That's why when you see uh, um, somebody who has been married for a while, you see that uh, they are, they, all the excesses are gone. <laughs> See, they're more, especially if the marriage is working and they are listening and they are taking correction. <laughs> like I said in the last service, for every married person, you need to come to terms with the fact that your spouse is your God given sandpaper. Sandpaper. Because the Bible says here that it may cleanse her and take away the spot and ring. What do you do? You use sandpaper. They just brush against each other. Zzz, zzz, zzz. And, and there's no sandpapering experience that is very pleasurable. Are you getting me? That's why in simple relationships, I mean, singles relationship, when somebody brings out the sandpaper like this, you're like, ah, no, no, no. It's not that hard. <laughs> That's why many, many single relationships they, they, they break up easily. And it's okay to break single relationship. But do all your breaking up before you get into marriage. Uh -huh. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Some people are not married now because they are running away from some paper. I, I mean, I, I counsel some singles. They will tell me, Pastor, can you imagine? That lady, ah, she's so possessive. I just met her three weeks ago. And she will call me. She will call me. Call me in the morning. She will ask me, have you prayed? As if she's my mother. Is she my mother? <laughs> If she's asking, it's for your good. She didn't say you should curse anybody. She said you should pray. <laughs> and if you don't listen now, you won't listen in marriage. Are you still with me? Yeah. It's some people are showing. It's showing small, small. You have just seen one side. You have not seen the other side. Get into marriage first. <laughs> you see the two sides of the some paper. They brush you on this side, brush you on that side. <laughs> and your response should be, Jesus is Lord. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> marriage, essentially, what God has in mind is that it results into a better me. Into a me that has the nature of God, which is holiness. Not essentially, you know, all the frivolities that we talk. All, all the goodness will come into it. The romance, the goodness, the love, the happiness will come. But that's when we accept that the end result is this. There's no point just being happy for being happy sake and everything is going down. Yeah. And um, we're not getting better. Nothing is improving. 
These are uh, the, the three principal mindsets that we have as a church when it comes to marriage. If you have any struggle with any of these three, you may have some bit of challenge with the teachings of this month. Yeah, I, I need to let you know that. But if you subscribe to these three mindsets, then all the things I'll be teaching this month will just be building line upon line, precept upon precept upon, you know, all this, and it's going to help you to move your relationships uh, much, much forward. Let's discuss uh, building a good foundation for your marriage, building a good foundation. Jesus spoke about the foundation that we build for anything, especially our relationships, and he was very clear about the importance of foundation. Many marriages are crashing today because the foundation can no longer hold up the superstructure that we're putting on top of it. Yeah. And Jesus spoke a little bit to foundation in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24, 25, and 26. It says, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on the house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. And in marriage, you have the rain, you have the wind, you have the flood. Is everything going to crack? Is it going to come crashing? Many people are leaving each other today because what they are building on the foundation, the foundation cannot carry it. In fact, in some cases, there was no foundation in the first instance. Yeah. And that's, that's why things, the center is no longer holding because there's no foundation. But if we pay attention to the foundation, to go a long way to help us with what we're building. A good foundation is critical to the longevity of a marriage. A good foundation is very extremely critical to the longevity of a marriage is a good foundation, one thing that is extremely critical. So singles, listen to me. In this series, you're going to learn a bit about what you should focus on as you strive to build the foundation. And if you're here, you're married, we want to examine, especially with the message of this morning, examine a little bit about, uh, 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 you know, about your foundation. Let's examine your foundation a little bit. What kind of foundation have you put in place? What do you need to do to strengthen this foundation? For some people here, you may actually find out that maybe there's no foundation. Let's start, to re- let's start to build it now. Yeah. Let's start to build it now. Are you still with me today? A poor foundation will lead to a, a, a weak building. A poor foundation leads to a weak building. You know, the way it works is that the, your, you, when you think about foundation, you think about stability. You think about the, 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 the height, how far I want to go. Yeah. That's what you think about when you think about foundation. The foundation of a story building is not the same foundation for a five-story building. The foundation of a bungalow will not carry a story building most of the time. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. How far do you want to go? How long do you want your marriage to last? How happy do you want it to be? A lot of this is premised on the foundation. You see, some people put up some structures and they look good on the temporary. You know, so for the first three, four, five years, the structure is looking good. The only thing is after a while, you see a crack. Yeah. And you say, ah, have you rented a building like that before? You just see a crack. Ah, where's this thing coming from? I, I mean, I studied engineering in first degree, so I understand structures. I took courses in structures and strength of materials, you know, and all that. So you, 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 when you see that, in civil engineering, what they say is that when, it, when a crack is propagating itself and it's, it's coming from above down, most of the time, it may not be structural. But when it's coming from down and it's going up, it may be structural. So you can use a uh, putty filler and fill it. And that's what some people do. Yeah. Uh, they'll say, I'll just buy a car. She will keep quiet. That's putty filler. You'll fill it. Or the latest iPhone, just buy it for her. But well, she's coming back in three weeks' time. When the iPhone thing has gone down to say, look, but what we're talking about, the crack is there, and I'm not happy. Yeah. So when 
is a foundational problem. The crack most of the time will propagate itself from somewhere below the building and continue to go up. And it will continue to get bigger. And you, you stop it there, it will start there. You stop it there, it will start there because it's a foundational problem. A lot of the time, especially when the foundation is really extremely weak, you may have to pull down the building. Yeah. I took my time with my team in recent time to study and look at the, 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 the tallest building in the world currently. Tallest building built by human beings in the world. It's called the Burj Khalifa. It's in Dubai. Many of us have been to Dubai before. And you can't get to Dubai and not see the Burj Khalifa, especially if you, you went after uh, uh, 2010, when it was opened January of 2010. Yeah. That's the Burj Khalifa. That's an observatory on, I think, the 200 floor, something like that, where you can see almost the whole of the Emirates. And it will interest you how much work went into the foundation of this building, now at George, the tallest man-made structure in the world. Things don't just grow tall. Things don't just endure. It's not automatic that anything will be stable except the right things have been done to the foundation of such. That pushed me to study the foundation of this building a little more. I'm not going to bore you with so much details, but if you're an engineer here, you, you have some you know, understanding of structures, this may interest you a little more than other people in the congregation this morning. But let it interest you for the sake of a bit of understanding about the importance of foundation. So, to support this unprecedented height of building, the engineers developed a new structural system called the buttressed core, which consists of a hexagonal core reinforced by three buttresses that form the Y shape. That's what you see on the screen right now, the Y shape. This is what the foundation looked like. This building is so tall, if it rocks in this direction, that direction or this direction is supported. Yeah. It's supported, well supported. So the structural system enables the building to support itself laterally and keeps it from twisting. This building is uh, in height. <laughs> I think it's uh, 289 meters. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, 829, sorry, 0.8 meters. In number of floors, over 200. I think 209 or so, or 211 floors. Now, to get a bit more into the foundation of this building, you know what they did? Though that, that buttressed core was filled with about 192 piles. This is the size of one pile. That's what you see. One pile has a diameter of 1.5 meters. I am about 1.7. So you can imagine my, my height in diameter. That's about the size of the GP tank that stores water in your house. It's really those 2,000 or 5,000 liter. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the, the size of each one of these pillars. And these are the pillars that went down to 50 meters below sea level to hold the building in place. 892 of them. What's the magic behind the stability of the tallest building in the world? It's a scientific uh, 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 revolution. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to build something that will go very tall, endure pressure, endure wind, endure all sorts of affliction? The foundation has to be very strong. Can you help me ask your neighbor, are you building a bungalow a Burj, or a Burj Khalifa? Is it because if you are building a bungalow, all this story I've been telling, you don't need it. You know, sincerely, you don't need all this story. You don't need all this plenty of research if you are building a bungalow. They just lay block, they dig small. 
<laughs> and lay the block, and then you just start to build. Because it's just a bungalow. It's not carrying so much weight. But you see, the amount of weight coming on marriages today should tell us that we should pay more attention to our foundation. There's economic weight. There's a social weight. The, 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 the social economic landscape is, is, trouble, is, is troubling. We live in a day and a time where everything is being redefined. Humanity is in, is in, is in, in trouble. The Bible says male and female created them. We said we have created others. Yeah. Gender is supposed to be two. At the last count, it was 51 now. Yeah. So you just try to register on Facebook afresh and get with gender, and you'll see the drawdown. you count. Heterogender, transgender, can you gender, this one gender? That's how you'll be seeing it. And you ask us, in fact, you will now begin saying that, should I click male? Because I'm not actually sure. Maybe I'm something else. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> so you check yourself very well. Which one am I? That's how troubled humanity is right now. We don't even know who we have very well again. It's only the Bible that can define who I have. And the Bible says male and female created in them. So I'm male. <laughs> That's what I've chosen. Based on the Bible and what I can see of myself. Praise God. Those are all the pressures that our marriage will come into. We live in a time and an age where some, some people may be married and you just discover that the, the wife or the husband is heterosexual. What kind of thing is that? Do you, do you get what I'm saying? Those are the kind of storm coming upon some marriages. And that's why we need to look into our foundation very well. Extremely important that we pay attention to our foundation this season. The pressure is getting stronger. Media is not helping. You know, uh, the internet is there. You know, so, uh, social network. Uh, now you don't need to, to, to flex. You don't need to leave your house. I hope you understand what I'm saying. That, that's pressure. Pressure. When my parents did not grow up, grow up with Barberry. Or oh, what's that, that one? What's up? Yeah. So the pressure I'm facing now, they don't understand it. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. I mean, you can literally wake up in the morning and you wake up with a piece of poetry from another woman. On your, and you're looking at it like this. And you're looking at your wife and you're looking at this one to her. Did you send it? No. So <laughs> that's how bad the situation is right now. The world is changing. The pressure is getting stronger. The winds are blowing more and more. The storm is getting fiercer. The foundation has to be strong. Are you still with me today? The foundation has to be strong. So what are you building? Because what you are building is what determines the kind of foundation you embrace. Is there a vision for my family? The one I'm about to build, or maybe the one I'm involved in right now. When they were building the Burj Khalifa, 2005, 2006, 2007, I saw a show on CNN once, I think in 07, where they said one third of all the construction cranes in the world was in Dubai at that time. Because, they had, because of the attention. They were flying in architects and builders from all around Europe and America. What you are building is what determines the kind of people who help you to build. Yeah. Some of us, the way we are treating marriage, you, it's like you gather, you know, a, a fresh graduate together to build Burj Khalifa. You can never get there. Yeah. I, I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Because you, you talk to very ignorant people like yourself as a single person, and your friend is telling you something. Say, yes, you're making sense. I've been telling them. <laughs> you see, ignorance, corroborating ignorance, you know, and... <laughs> Who is talking to you about relationship? Who is advising you? The guy, the architect, uh, uh, Adrian, what's his name? The guy who, 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 who put up this, the structure of Hobby is the topmost, top 
half percent or top one percent in the world. You, you don't commit this kind of thing to anybody. But like I said, you can come up as a cry if you want to build bungalow. You just call, you know, you understand what I'm saying? There are plenty. Just get on the road and say, hey, I need a builder. One will come. Is it bricklayer? They will come right now. And you build anything. We can build something between now and tomorrow morning. <laughs> yeah. But a good foundation requires mastery. It requires, you know, good support, experienced support, professionalism. We live in a day and an age where you ask somebody, ah, so you're getting married in six, six months or maybe one year. And you know the truth? They are busy booking halls, makeup artist, wedding dress, without thinking of counseling. That's the last thing on their mind. Yeah, I met a young man many years ago who wanted me to mentor him and, you know, was telling me about his business as a photographer, top notch in this country. And then he was telling me, he said, Pastor, you know, when I knew God started to help me in my business as a photographer, I said, how? He said, when people started to shift their wedding days because of me. So, so I'll get a call from somebody who will say, uh, um, um, I need you to cover my wedding. And I'll say, oh, I'm booked for that day. And you say, give me options. And I'll give them date. And they'll go and refix their date. Just because they want me to cover their event. That's how flimsy we have become as a people. Photographer, photographer. <laughs> photographer. <laughs> as in, <laughs> God bless my father in his grave. If he hears that, he can pass out again. <laughs> to say, is this how the world is now? <laughs> now <you laughs> I mean, wedding day used to be, you know, very, you know, sacrosanct. It's like when the family chooses it, it's just, and you consult and over-consult and get a consensus. And then, but these days, it's not like that. Just the hairstylist can change the wedding day. They say, because I want this person to do makeup for me. Meanwhile, the person talking does not have, is a believer, but has, knows nothing, scripturally speaking, about marriage. And because they don't ask you for foundational certificate before the issue marriage certificate, everybody, anybody can get it. Just go to a Koei registry. They issue it to you. But we need to pay attention to our foundation. Is there a vision? What can you see in the future of your family? Because the quality of your foundation is a reflection of the potential of the marriage that you have seen. Yeah. There was a time every week they added one floor to the Burj Khalifa, and they were going like that. The project managers were very strict with what they were doing because they know that the foundation can carry it. The foundation can carry it. Let me round off today with three sides to the foundation that you need to pay attention to. I'll continue from there next Sunday. Are you seeing good reasons why if you love your friends, you should invite them to church this month? Yeah so that they can come out of their frivolity and embrace how to build something that will last. Three things, or three sides to a marriage, three things that make up a good foundation. One is spiritual. The spiritual foundation is extremely important. How are you getting through the process of your decision of who to marry if you're still single? Are you praying about it? Or do you have a list that you just bring out of your jacket? It's dark, tall, handsome, three mobile phones. <laughs> that was when mobile phones were still very expensive. These days, anybody can have three mobile phones. Yeah. But you see, people, they, people have all kinds of, you know, lists. The ladies have their own. The guys have their own. Are you really praying about this thing? Are you committing it to God? Now, you're already in a marriage. What's happening to your spiritual foundation? Has it become weak if you had one before? Do you still pray together as a couple? Do you have the family altar? Do you pray with your children? Do you bless your children? A three-foot cord is not easily broken. That's what the scripture says. Yeah. God is the third person there. And he always wants to be there. He wants to remain in your consciousness. He wants, he is the author of marriage. And you cannot run it successfully without him. 
So the spiritual foundation is extremely important. What kind of spiritual foundation are you laying if you are just in a relationship now? If you're already married, what is happening to your spiritual foundation? What is happening to it? Is God a part of your marriage or not? How are you making your choices and decisions? Are they guided by the word of God? The choices you are making in this union, how do you come about them? Is it God guiding you? Secondly, is that part that we call, for the want of a better word, the chemical foundation, the chemistry, the chemistry. Physical and emotional attraction is important for a marriage to be well cemented. Let me read this scripture, Song of Solomon chapter 5, from verse 10. This is a description, and it, it just portrays how also the Bible believes in chemistry. My beloved is white and ruddy, chief among 10,000. His head is like the finest gold. His locks are wavy and uh, black as raven. His eyes are like doves by the rivers of waters, washed with milk and fitly set. His cheeks are like a bud of spices, banks of scented herbs. His lips are lilies dripping with liquid mire. Uh, uh, his hands are rods of gold set with berry. His body is carved ivory inlaid with sapphire. His legs are pillars of marble set on bases of fine gold. His countenance is like Lebanon, excellent as the cedars. This is the description of a man is it a man? I'm just wondering. It sounded like a creature to me. <laughs> but that's what chemistry draws. It, it brings poetry and rhymes out of you. It is chemical. You know, it just, it, it, it bubbles within your system. That was what happened to Adam when he saw Eve. Oh, bone of my bone. Flesh of my flesh. Before that time, Adam was never poetic. Saw a woman and something just moved in his body. And all of a sudden, everything changed. The funny thing about chemistry is that it can be very transient. It takes a lot to put it together. And chemistry must not be the only foundation in a relationship. For many people, chemistry is the only thing. Yeah. So you see yourself as singles. Before you even say, eh, eh, hello, how are you? You're already naked. It's all about chemistry. Chemistry is so strong. When chemistry is not well managed at the foundation level, it can destroy the real foundation. Because by the time you start sleeping together, you can't pray together again, effectively. Because you are praying with guilt in your heart and telling yourself, we don't even know. God have mercy. God heal. You understand what I'm saying? And it's becoming more rampant today that two people get into a relationship and the first thing they do is to embrace chemistry and build it up to a level it, it gets out of control. By the time chemistry starts to push you here and there, You'll be chasing each other like somebody's chasing you. Yeah. And chemistry has become overpowering. The funny thing is that when you lay the foundation of your marriage only on chemistry, it's doomed to fail. Can I say that again? The marital foundation that is laid only on chemistry is doomed to fail because the chemistry will not last even the first year of your marriage. Yeah. If that's the only foundation you have, if that's the only foundation, when, when, whenever we focus only on the physical things, we're laying only a chemical foundation. It will explode and get out of hand. You know, you know the funny thing? Some people's chemistry will overtake them even before marriage. It overtake them so much, they impregnate each other. Chemistry became physics and physics biology. <laughs> and when biology sets in, biology brings complication because a baby will come. So before you even start, a baby is in the picture. It creates a lot of complication. I mean, people ordinarily should get married the first year or so, or the first few months, you're getting to know each other. First year, you know? But this one, before we start, we're already complicated. Because every addition to a marriage in terms of children is complication you're adding. Yeah, you know. Before you talk about school fees, airline ticket, you know, everything. In fact, you, you, there are some places you won't be able to go because you are too many and you cannot afford it. 
<laughs> I hope you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, that's how it works. Yeah, when my kids were smaller and we used to pay 25% airline ticket, I, I, in my heart, I used to desire that they won't grow up. <laughs> so I won't pay more. <laughs> but just a matter of time, now we pay full ticket. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So before you bring all the complications in, first of all, put the foundation in place. Put the foundation in place. Chemistry is volatile. Chemistry vaporizes easily. Chemistry can come easily, and a lot of the time, it will go so easily. It's unrealistic because it's based on imageries, you know, and all that. You know, you can actually develop chemistry for a television personality that you see every day on TV. Yeah, some people will say, ah, if the man just touched me, I'll pass out. And you have not met the man before, you just see, maybe see the man in a movie. That's how flimsy chemistry is. It doesn't even make sense sometimes. Some people develop chemistry even for mannequin. Yeah. In work, already working and composing his rhyme for the mannequin. He said, it's mannequin, it's not a human being. <laughs> As in, do you know how chemistry works? You, you're looking at an image and your body is literally floating. That's how flimsy chemistry is. This thing doesn't even exist. It's an image. And that's what some people build a relationship on. Yeah. That's the only thing some people build a relationship on. Singles, hear me and hear me well. Chemistry is not good enough to build a relationship on. Though there should be chemistry, but it shouldn't overpower you that much. You want to marry somebody that you're connected to, that you feel some sense of connection. It may be intellectual, it may be physical, it may be any, any form of connection. And the connection can build over time. When you overbuild it in the shortest possible time, it will explode. Are you still with me today? Go and ask Joseph's, uh, Joseph, yeah, Potiphar's wife. Just looking at small boy. Somebody's married to a military general. And they brought a one boy that's 21 into the house. And you cannot just manage the attraction. It's overpowering to the point where you have to grab this boy. As in, have you played it back in your mind before? Because I just wonder. That's how overpowering chemistry can become if it's not well managed. The third one for today is relational. So we have the, the spiritual foundation, the chemical foundation, and the relational foundation. The relational foundation. The relational foundation. In Song of Solomon chapter 5, verse 16b there, you see that he said, he says, uh, he said his mouth is most sweet. Yes, he is altogether lovely. This is my beloved, and this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. This is my beloved, and this is my friend. It's not only my beloved, so this is not only chemistry. It's also my friend. The relational foundation is extremely important. Developing friendship while we're just meeting and we're not, but we're, friendship. Or some of us got into marriage. I think it was in the fourth or fifth year of our marriage that my wife and I had to have a, a private talk to say, you know the truth, we got into this marriage without being friends. And we thought marriage would confer friendship on us. And it has not happened. I can't lie to you, you're not my best friend. Can we start to build it now? Yeah, that was seven years ago. Because we just realized that we were not friends. We thought friendship would come automatically. You know, you can actually love somebody and not, you may not be friends. The friendship is the one you then walk on from that point where love is established. Yeah, and friendship is the one that will support the marriage going forward from there. Friendship has the power of strengthening your spiritual foundation and the chemical foundation. Spiritual foundation can strengthen relational foundation it's only the chemical one that is useless. It can't do anything apart from itself. You know that? I'm telling you the truth. Because some people think that chemistry can strengthen a relationship. It's not possible. So, you know what happened? People get into a relationship and they start talking, touching, touching. After a while, they start sleeping together. Then they start to fight on issues of patience or forgiveness. And then the man is thinking, if we sleep together more, we'll resolve this issue. The woman is thinking, you must be stupid. You are smoking something. <laughs> no, that's the truth. Because women are the only... When it comes to chemistry, they are wiser than men. As in, they know that this thing is not going to work. You may push a woman into 
still going into, you know, fornication with you. But the woman knows that we're just building, you know, a hole. It's not, not going to lead us anywhere. We're just, we're just digging. Yeah. Because some people think that you can resolve relational issues with sex. No. And real intimacy is premised on relational goodness. You actually seriously enjoy lovemaking with anyone that, I mean, in marriage, that you are in good terms with. Yeah. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. We're going to look next week into how do we build friendship in marriage? And how do we start to build friendship even in relationship? Lift your right hand with me this morning. Thank you for listening. We hope you are truly blessed. Please feel free to email us at info at elevationng.org for all inquiries or to share any testimonies. You can also follow us on our social media channels at Elevation NG to have access to real-time updates on all broadcasts and special programs. Till we come your way again, keep making greatness common.